writers and readers. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle Winkler and I'm an indie author in training. On this channel, I tell you about my self-publishing journey and share the mistakes I've made so hopefully you don't have to make them too. Today's video is a little different. We're going to be on the computer today and I'm going to make this video for anyone who's wanted to try Scrivener for outlining or writing their novel but you just want to learn the basics and get up and running quickly without having to take that learning curve. <laughs> you can always go back and learn the advanced features later, right? So I've made this in three parts. The first part is the bare bones. Each section is going to go more detailed and advanced, and you can decide how far you want to take it. First, I'm going to show you how to import a Microsoft Word document or start a new project and use Scrivener's basic features and then also import that or I'm sorry export that uh, document back into Word. And that's really all you need to get started in the simplest way possible. So if that's all I'm gonna try uh, I'm gonna try timestamps. So if that's all you want that'll go up to this time. From that point on it'll be more advanced things. Uh, I'll go over the simple features by breaking down my outline structure that I use and hopefully this will help you get a little more out of Scrivener without still having to go through all the advanced things. This is like a medium version. And that goes until this timestamp. And then lastly, I'll show you how I change label icons and use stage and status to keep track of revisions while I'm working with my critique partners. This still isn't scratching the surface of what Scrivener can do. It's more advanced and hopefully by learning these steps and adjusting them to suit your style, it'll help you get the most out of this program. So let's get started. First things first, if you haven't started your rival, writing your novel yet, you can go ahead and just open Scrivener and we'll get to the, there in a minute. But if you already have your novel in Microsoft Word, you have to do one thing before you can import it. We well, don't have to, but it would make it a lot easier. <laughs> first thing you need to do is go through each chapter and put a little hashtag symbol. Now in the settings in Scrivener, you can make this any symbol you want, but why not use a hashtag? It makes it simple because it's already set up to do that. So you just want to go through, and if you don't already have your chapters set up like this, you're either going to want to do that real quick, or just you know where your story is, and if there's a part where you're like, eh, I might put a chapter here, go ahead and just put a hashtag in that spot. And here in a minute when we get into Scrivener, you'll see why this is going to be very helpful. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and open up Scrivener. And when you first open it, it should look something like this. And maybe in a later video, we'll come back to what each one of these things does. Definitely take note of this interactive tutorial. I would come back to that when you have some time and go through it. That'll tell you every little thing about how to use Scrivener. But right now, we're just going to get started. So you're going to go to blank, and then you're going to want to name it. The way I name things is I abbreviate the title. I say something that will tell me what this version is, like this is first draft. And then I always put the date. Year, month is, eh, what is the month? January. <laughs> Today is the 27th. This is going to be your file name in your folder. So then you're also going to want to go, now I've already got mine set because I've been practicing this, but you're going to want to go browse and then find where you want that file to be and select that folder and then go ahead and click Create. And there you go. So here's Scrivener, I'm gonna make it full screen. Scrivener looks a little bit like Word at this point. You've got your top menu up here, File, Edit, View, that should all look pretty similar to you. And then on the bottom here you have where you're gonna type. This is where your book goes. <laughs> That's where you're going to be typing your novel. Over here on the left, this is your navigation, and we'll see how that's used here in a minute. Right now, there's nothing here, there's just this. Your draft, that's basically your manuscript. Research, that's where you can put anything, which we'll get into later. That's where you can put all your research and obviously the trash can. So we'll go back to here. On the right hand side, this little I button up here. This is the inspector tab, and these two, the left and right here, you can make whatever size is comfortable for you. Over on the right hand side, all we're going to get into right now is just that this top part is like an index card for like when you're outlining. 
you can put a little synopsis of what this scene is about, or this chapter is about. Down here you've got notes you can attach to each tap chapter. And that's about it. If this is all you need, you can go ahead and write it. If you already have your novel written in Word, you're going to want to import it. So you go, whoops, before we start, make sure you've, you're selected draft. This is like the top level. This is a folder that all your, all your um, chapters are going to be in. So make sure that's selected and then go file, import. Now, if you only have, say you only have a couple pages of your book written so far, you can go files and just input them all into one document. But if you have all the chapters like we just looked at, you're going to want to go import and split. And then you're going to want to find the file. That's the file, my practice file. And then see, we made this hashtag in front of all the chapters. You can change that to whatever you want, but that's what it's set up for by default. Then go ahead and click OK. And in just a moment, boom, there's your novel, all separated out into in individual documents. Here's your folder, which has all of them. And you can drag these around. Let's say you decided what's happening in chapter one it shouldn't go there, it should go over here. Just drag it. Makes it really simple to see your whole novel at one view. When you're ready and you're done with your book, you can export it by going to File, Compile. And if it's a small little window like this, click the little down arrow and it'll show you all your different chapters here. And you can make sure that they're all selected. They should be though by default. And you can compile it into a PDF, into plain text, a Word document. You can even do a web page, which I haven't done before, but it's there, it's possible. You can also do it for print if you're just going to print it out. I'm going to leave this where it was. Document. Oh, no, wait. Docx. There we go. And then you're going to click Compile and then go to wherever you want to put it. And it'll save it to that folder as a Word document. But I'm not going to do that right now. Cancel. So that's it for the very simple version. Now we're going to go to a little more advanced. We're going to talk about folders and outlining and how I use the prog prog and how I use the program um, when I'm making a novel. K.M. Whelan has a great template on her website. Let's go look at her website. I'm going to link this page in the description so you can get to it easily. She has her own template for outlining and structuring her novel and you scroll down a little bit and there's the link right there. You download it as a zip file and then make sure you open it before you try to open it in Scrivener. You have to not open it. You have to export it to a folder on your computer before you can open it in Scrivener because it has this special extension on the file name. So what her outline looks like is very detailed. Her outline is meticulous. Look at all these different sections here on the left. <laughs> the main part of her book is just this little section right here. This is it. This is all the book. All the rest of this is outlining and notes and things to help her write the book, which is fantastic. I wish that I could go this detailed. A lot of people can. Um, yeah. And if you want to try using hers, she's got instructions right here, which will show you basically how to use this outline setup. I took a look at this and I, I couldn't do it. I was overwhelmed. It was too much for me. I like things a lot more simply. So if you want things more simple, here's how I made mine. It's also the Save the Cat structure. You have Act 1, 2, and 3. And I also simplified the research section. I didn't have quite as many templates and things down here. But you can use whatever works for you. Um, on the top, I added a page that has my book title, synopsis, things like that that I want to reference. If I'm in the middle of my story and I'm like, oh, what's the theme again? I don't think this is working. I can just go up to book info and there it is. So that was my addition. And the way you add a page in here is you just go up to this button, click the little down arrow and you can add a new text, which would make one of these. You can add a new folder. You can do one from template. Like if you have templates set up down here, we have uh, character templates and setting templates you can click that and it'll just create a new one from there on this right hand panel i mentioned this briefly before and you may have noticed when you're in manuscript view you can look at your whole manuscript and it'll tell you the word count of your entire manuscript 
or you can go to this cork board and it'll show you, hang on, let me show you, this little, this little note card over here will show up in the cork board view. So right now it's only showing Act 1, 2, and 3 because this is a top level, manuscript is the top level, and 1, 2, and 3 are the folders within it. See if I were to shrink these, that would correspond to these cards. You expand these out and you click on that act, then all these ones underneath that one will show up as their own cards. And this is really helpful when you're outlining because I think I might have mentioned it in the other part of the video. You can just go, well, this that shouldn't go there. I think this goes further down the story. You can just click and drag it. And there you go. You've changed the order of it. Put it back. <laughs> I usually make this first line in here the chapter um, number and title. But right now, as, as it's an outline view, what's over here is what goes in the scene. Opening image, it's one first one percent of the novel, and it's establishing and then set up uh, is expanding on that opening scene, the catalyst or the inciting incident. So this little card will tell me when I'm outlining what kind of things should be written in this part of the book. That was really helpful in the beginning when structure was so confusing to me. Also over here on the inspector pane we have project notes and document notes. Project notes follow you no matter where you go. If you put something there no matter which document you're looking at, it's still going to show up there. Document notes, as the name suggests, is for something only for that particular document. Right now we're on the theme stated document and you can see where you are over here on the left in navigation. It's also the same word is going to show up here on the top of your editing page where you write and it's also going to show up here on the index card and synopsis. So it's easy to know where you are in the book at this point. And that's what this note is going to go attach to. If you go to another section, that same note isn't going to be there. It's going to be different. But no matter where you go, if you click that bar and then click document notes, you're going to have the same notes for wherever you're at in the document. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm going in circles. <laughs> anyway, so there's your medium version of how to use this, a few of the extra features. Um, now I'm going to talk in something a little more detailed some of the advanced stuff that I found really helpful, especially when I'm doing, when I'm using critique partners and beta readers. And I no longer need to know what goes in the scene. I've got it down. I've got everything written. So now I want to break all this into chapters. All you have to do is right click it over here in the navigation pane. You can change the icon to uh, pretty much anything you want. As you can see, there's a billion different icons. <laughs> you can even create your own icon. Where'd it go? Oh, I lost it. It's no longer here. I had my own created icon. I don't see it anymore. That's okay. You can change to a flag. Make it a blue flag. You can change to uh, a notepad. You can change it to whatever you want. Whatever helps you remember what it is and differentiate it. So I'm going to make this, change the icon, reset to default. Since this is under this, it's a page, it's a document. If it was up here it, and it had things under it, it would be a folder. So it's just the same kind of organization as your Windows Explorer would be. So when I'm making them chapters, like this is my chapter one, so I'll go over here I'll change it to chapter one. Jade wakes up for work. Okay, that's not what happens, <laughs> but you get the idea. You can put, name it however you want, and then you just keep going through and you name all of them into the different chapters that they are. Let's say, let's say I decided that oh, I only need this part to be the chapter. I can go and click where I want the second chapter to start. And then I can go up to documents and I can do split at selection, click that and boom, it's created a new document. And now this is chapter two, Jade misses the bus. Oops. <laughs> so 
that's how I break it up into different chapters. When it's all broken up into chapters, this is how I keep track of my critique partners. For one thing, I add in a page at the top that has my outline, my blurb, things like that. I also add up a page in the top which has my color code so I can remember because sometimes I won't remember what color means what. Uh, also a style sheet if certain words are capitalized when they usually aren't, I'll put that in here too. And I can just easily jump up to this page and add things as I go. So let's say chapter one, I'm ready. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, sorry. Hope this wasn't shocking. I didn't wanna spoil anything. This first part has changed a bit, so I don't mind you reading that, but let's say this first chapter is ready to go to critique partner. There's a few different ways you can specify it. For one, you can change this flag, right click, go to change icon and then change it to whatever you want. Let's say we're gonna make it, oh wait, I have my little key right here. When it's ready to send for feedback, I change it to purple, but let's say I just sent it. So I wanna change this to a red flag because in my world, red flag means do not edit this chapter. It's out for feedback and I don't wanna make changes till I get it back from them. Another way you can specify is over here on the right where it says general metadata. There's stages and status. Stages, I put things like ready to publish, final edits, editor, things like that. And so what this would be is if I just sent it to my critique partners, the stage would be in critique partners. Status is I just sent it, so I'm awaiting feedback. You can see the statuses I have there. Now these are very helpful because if you switch to a different view, up here at the top, there's three different views. There's your page view, your cork board, the outliner view. You click there, whoops, see it's only on the one document so it's only gonna show up here. Whatever you're highlighting here is what's gonna show up in the middle. So we wanna go to whole manuscript. There's lots of different uh, columns you can put here. But stage and status are on here and so you can easily bring up your whole manuscript and see what, what you have your edits on, what's ready to be reviewed, what's out to CPs, it's great, it also can show you the word count for each chapter. There's so much to this, and I really recommend if you've got the basics down and you wanna play around with how to make this work for you better, play around with some of these things, it really helps. So one more thing before I let you go, I know this video is probably getting very long, how to export all this. Because I did show this in the beginning, but when I'm doing, when I'm using a critique partner or betas and I wanna send them only a few chapters, you open up the compile window and if you alt click on windows i'm sorry i have no idea what it is on mac it's different <laughs> right click or alt click it'll uncheck all of them Alt click again it'll check all of them so what i do is i unclick all of them first and then let's say i want to send them chapters three four and five i only select those when i go to compile those are the only chapters it'll send so that helps a lot rather than having to compile the whole thing and then cut and paste the part you need. You can only do one chapter or two chapters. So anyway, if we're printing out the whole thing, or even if you're just doing a couple chapters, make sure they're check marked. If you want to have a page break before them, which like for editors, they probably want that. You just have to check that for each one. And then click compile, oh, compile four. You can do PDF. Word document, you can do it just to print, all different kinds of things. We're gonna do Word document, click compile, and then you choose where you wanna compile it to, um, and the name you wanna compile it as. And what it'll do, let's do this real quick. Don't look at my folders. So we wanna do for my critique partners. Actually, I want just on the altar for my critique partners. So then we're gonna go save. And there you go, Scrivener's completed compiling. So then you just close out of there. And there it is. Just send the alt there for my critique partners. And here it is, just the way you had it before. So that's it, I hope this has been helpful for you. If there's anything I glossed over that you wanted me to go into on another video, let me know. There's so many good tutorials out there that go into the really advanced features, so I recommend you go in and check those out. But hopefully this has been a good place for you to start. Let me know in the comments if I missed something.
Sign up for my monthly newsletter to get exclusive short stories featuring the main characters of my upcoming novel, D Dust on the Altar. I'll put a link in the description below. And if you like the video, please click like and consider subscribing. I'd appreciate it. I make videos once a week and I'm on Twitter and Instagram daily at mwinklerbooks. Thanks for watching. See you next time.